Hey there smartphone fans, welcome back for another honest hands-on review here on Smartphone Wars and it's finally real. The Android Oreo budget phone with full view 18x9 display and great specs is finally here. And today you'll be watching my Cubot X18 Plus honest hands-on review. Is this the best budget phone yet? First of all, you may not have heard of Qbot, but they're only certified Chinese brand by Google out there from the lesser known brand. So you know you're getting a secure device with up-to-date updates and real Google certification. Inside the package you also get your micro USB cable, fast charger and a nice shockproof silicon case. And as far as specs goes, this is a real real looker guys. 6 inch 2160 by 1080 pixels, 20 megapixel camera, Android Oreo, 64 gigs of onboard storage, which is expandable, and 4 gigs of RAM, as well as a 4000 mAh battery. And this is a glass phone, so very, very premium in design. Definitely, you're not looking for this when it comes to budget phones, you're expecting like cheap build quality, cheap materials, like maybe cheaper plastic or cheaper metal but the Cubot X18 Plus is a glass phone and it feels really nice and really solid. Now this may be a 4000 mAh battery but it's definitely not the thickest devices and it's definitely not the heaviest ones. Operable with one hand, very light and very nice because all the sides are curved on this device so this make for a very very nice one hand usage device out there. The phone also rocks the headphone jack because it thinks that it's not cool to not have that in a budget phone. The buttons are very solid, the dual nano sim tray is on your left side and as I said this is very very fine craftsmanship we're talking about here you can see this phone is built to last and it's built very very well. Solid metal rim on the sides, very nice, almost like a unibody design, the buttons don't wobble. This phone does not feel like a budget phone and definitely doesn't feel cheap so very very nice build quality and as i said this is a light device that can run an 80 grams just for a six inch phone and of course it uses that new 18 by 9 display infinity display or full view display you might have heard it's really really cool with basically non-existent bezels on the side the phone also comes with a rear fingerprint scanner which can be used for unlocking and a few other very neat tricks it does have a pull up app draw, which I know most of you really love. And this is all stock Android, no boardware inside, like FM radio, really nothing extra added in here besides all the Google apps which come pre installed on this device. Since I said this is a Google certified phone and it's part of that Android One program to receive regular updates every month, and you might have heard of it. Now, as I said, the fingerprint scanner can do a few neat tricks. You can use it to return back or hold it to view recent tasks and a cool new feature, which I've never seen. Basically, you can map any of your fingers to launch an app when the phone is with the screen off. So you just press any of the fingers you put in there and it will automatically open an app of your choice, which is really cool, but I haven't really found a good use case for it since I only unlock with uh, my index fingers on both hands. Now let's talk more about the Android Oreo on this phone. As I said, February security patch, Android phone program, real genuine Android Oreo in there. There's no tricks, it's not a, a bloatware or anything like that. This is absolutely genuine Android Oreo. It's a mood language from so any language you can think of is in there. And Android Oreo also comes with the new snooze notifications feature and the hold on the icons to view additional settings and access some functions in preview. So this is really helpful for those of you who like to keep a few more apps on the home screen. And also Android Oreo comes with uh, all the Android Nougat goodies like screen recording and naturally split screen multitasking, which the Cubot X18 Plus does really, really well, which you see later on. Now, let's talk more about the 18.9 display in the Cubot X18 Plus. Now, the same resolution as the Samsung S8 and LG G6, 2160 by 10,080. Glorious pixels in a budget device. And this is a really quality display. This is not a cheap display, definitely even better than Xiaomi's Redmi 5 Plus and other 
well-known budget phones out there so Cupid really did a fine job and this does have olifobic coating Gorilla Glass on top which is scratch proof. This is a very fine display to like view your media on, access the web, browse your social apps, really really well done by Cubot. Uh, but something that's really not well done is the audio quality on the device. And now let's talk about what's inside the Cubot X18 Plus, what drives it. It's the MTK 6750T. That's why it's a very well known octacom chip, which is used in a lot of budget phones last year and is continuing to be used this year. And it's a decent chip, but a far cry from the Snapdragon 625. For instance, the Cubot X18 Plus battery charges rather quickly around one hour and a half to fully charge the entire battery, which is really, really nice since you get around one day of usage with like 40-50 minutes of charging. The battery life on X18 Plus is really not the strongest factor at around 5-6 to six hours screen on time with moderate usage on Tutu and the benchmark scores were really reasonable for a budget phone. It's really around the Nokia 3, Nokia 5 level and it's not worse phone than that. The GPS on the device however was absolutely excellent. I'm not kidding, this is a very good GPS device, locking very fast a signal from inside my house, which is a 3 out of 4 storage house, it's really really nice. This phone's LT bands are made to work in Asia, Europe and very limited in the US and Canada, so I recommend you import this phone if you're living in anywhere in Europe and in Asia, but check with your operator if you're living in USA and Canada for these bands. Camera performance on this phone, I was really expecting the camera to suck like really hard on it, but I was quite surprised. The q X18 Plus delivers a solid budget camera offering. Yes, it's not a Samsung Galaxy S7 in a $150 package, but still on a good sunny day or inside the mall, the phone delivers very, very accurate color production, very fast shutter speed, a bit more noise than I would like, but definitely a lot of detail since it's really a 16 and 20 megapixel sensor in there. Uh, macro shots, food shots, uh, outdoor, indoor shots, really, really nice quality, very fast shutter speed, very, very decent camera phone in my books. Even in low light conditions, I was actually surprised how decent the shots were for a sub $200 device we're talking about here. So I do think that this phone will definitely suffice anybody who's not really finicky with these cameras and definitely not coming from a Samsung S8, uh, S7 for instance. Video quality is really not bad, but it's not the strongest point of the phone for me. It actually looks, it looks quite nice. Moving on to the front camera, I can say absolutely the same as with the rear camera on a good sunny day maybe indoors, uh, even in like uh, not so well lit situations. The front camera actually delivers pretty decent photos with uh, a lot of quality, a bit more noise than I would like, but still very usable for social medias uh, and even those elevator selfies still look quite okay. But the regular video seems fine, 720p video front camera inside. I'm glad to report that the Cubit X18 Plus is a solid gaming device when it comes to performance, uh, putting it with uh, a very few high-end games like uh, the Shadow Fighter you're seeing here and World War Heroes. The phone actually did pretty pretty well when it comes to frame rates, really solid, no frame drops, so the MT6750 is still a very very good gaming chip as is the Cubit X18 Plus, a very decent gaming phone. One of the cons here is that uh, because the chip throttles a little bit, the phone gets hot when gaming for a long time and battery starts to drain really really fast so uh, even on a full charge I doubt that you can get more than like two and a half hours of uh, non-stop gaming on a single charge and the phone will actually get pretty pretty hot so not great for like longer than 15-20 minutes of gaming sessions but in that gaming session you will get very decent performance and this phone can run the latest Android games so decent gaming performance but not as good battery life as I would say with the Snapdragon 625. The phone was not the fastest opening apps but its multitasking abilities were really really good. Once you have all the apps time loaded, the 4GB RAM are really utilized as the phone rarely reloaded any apps and switch between them very very fast. So not the fast app opener, but definitely a great multitasking device. So what are my final thoughts on the first budget Android Oreo phone, the Qt X18 Plus? This is a really solid budget phone guys. 
premium build quality, great display, really decent cameras and real genuine Android Oreo. It may not be the best device at this price range, but it's definitely worth it for those who want to talk Androids and really don't care that much for gaming performance. You can buy the phone from the link in the description below, give the video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.